we are back. Considering Sigmund Freud, you remember last week, we considered uh, Kao Jung and other critical uh, contributors in psychology. Uh, we noted that Sigmund Freud uh, taught people like Kao Jung and uh, Sigmund Freud, rather, born 1856 to 1939. He was the initiator of the theory and method of psychoanalysis. His ideas have influenced the thought and culture well beyond the field of psychology. And some people go to an extent of saying that Freud is the father of psychology. And this is because in many areas of psychology he appears. Born of a Jewish parent in Freiburg, Moravia, he was the eldest in a family of eight. And he moved when he was a few years old to Vienna. Here, he lived in Vienna till he died. His father uh, was a merchant of modest means. When he was young, it is good to know him because he, we keep mentioning this gentleman in psychology. It's good to know the man. He had a sense of destiny when he was young. Hence, he was a ambitious man and he was full of confidence in his capacity to succeed. He always wanted to succeed. Of course, in life, when we want to succeed, we are likely to succeed. When we want to fail, we are likely to fail. When we are optimistic, we are likely uh, to go far. Now, Freud, his position, his ambitious uh, position or attribute is can be attributed to his mother because his mother regarded him very, very highly. And he experienced financial constraints throughout his life. So he was not from a rich family as such. He was from a father or a family of modest means, but this did not make him lose his focus. He experienced all this, but this ironically made him to abandon other ambitions and, be, and other ambitions, and he became a medical student. All was in his, his desire to succeed his interest. He was interested in scientific research and he gained considerable recognition for his work in anatomy and physiology. Thus, lack of money prevented him from pursuing further studies. He qualified, however, and practiced as a doctor, although he was unwilling initially. Another aspect of Sigmund Freud is that he was influenced by Charles Darwin. We know about Charles Darwin and of course his famous uh, theory of origin of species and specifically the theory of evolution, which in 1856 advanced the view that human beings just evolved from some species and we continue to evolve to a higher being to date. Freud was impressed by Darwin's work. He shared the view or the hope that scientific discoveries would reveal the secrets of the universe rendering religious explanations unnecessary. Now, in regard to determinism and unconsciousness, 
Sigmund Freud extended his strong deterministic beliefs to psychology, postulating a biological-based theory of instinct that human behavior was meaningful, was motivated, and goal-seeking, and that much mental activity was unconscious. Concerning the theories, Sigmund Freud advanced the theories of omnipotence of thought, of love-hate relationships, the Oedipus complex, and infertile sexuality that we have considered earlier. We already considered it much earlier. Of course, this was way back in 1897 and 1899. The theory of infant infantile sexuality was one of the main reasons why he was ostracized or isolated by most of the medical establishments, not only in Australia, but elsewhere, in all other corners of the world, particularly the world of academia. In his later years, he extended his ideas to social psychology. Now, in 1913, he published Totem and Taboo, linking Darwin's motion of the primal hold to his own theories about the Oedipus complex and the problems of guilty and expiation. Other speculative works followed on the struggle between an individual's libidino wishes and the demands of society, the role and future of religion, the connection between Jewish guilty and Christianity as wish fulfillment and anti-Semitism. Now, before going on, you note something there. Uh, there reached a time in the era, in the moment of isolation, when uh, Sigmund Freud was isolated by colleagues in the world of academia for setting very, very controversial positions. And uh, in the course of this isolation, he turned to social psychology. And you know what social, social psychology is all about. It is matters to do with religion, society, you know, how people behave, how people work, race issues, Jewish versus others, Jewish and Gentiles, and Christianity or religions as nothing but neurosis or neurotic or wishful thinking, wishful fulfillment, he came up with more controversial theories, which ironically have made us reach the far we have gone. Now, you also note something because we are not just reading the materials before us. We want to engage it. Uh, you also note something that Sigmund Freud uh, had something very, very special. This guy wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and that is a way of a genuine scorer okay for those who are in religion you may talk about how the guy turned to atheism that we are about to, to, to mention as we end this section on Sigmund Freud but I want to tell you a good writer a good speaker has to create some form of controversy somewhere on the way and that is the mark of a good scholar. You cannot please everybody. You have to be yourself. You have to bring out your personal feelings, your personal aspirations, your personal thoughts, hopes, and wishes. So Sigmund, Sigmund Freud is that good example, minus the theory of atheism, which some religious practitioners would say we can't forgive him for talking about atheism. But uh, from a scholarly perspective, this is a man who did not wait for people to direct him, to give him advice on matters they least knew. He went on. He's, he, he was able to swing into action and write, 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 write. Like in theology where we talk in church history about John Wesley, who said 
The whole world is my parish. Bishop, you can't send me to one parish. The priests are complaining that I'm moving all corners of uh, the all corners of the parishes you have assigned them, and I'm sending revival there. But I want to tell you, Bishop, the whole world is my parish. I want to speak to the whole world. I want to use the whole platform of the whole uh, the whole public square and take the message there. So you can see Sigmund Freud did not wait for people to tell him. Uh, that write only about uh, psychoanalysis in the strict psychological or biological scientific way. No, 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 no. He went on and became useful to society by researching and researching. Whether there were a few errors here and there, that is not the work of a researcher. It is the work of those who research later to correct earlier researches. We are still correcting some of the errors made by those who were before us. And that is the way of a scholar. It is not a question of waiting what people are going to say. Sometimes they have no clue. They have no clear idea. They are sometimes suffer from, you know, lack of enough, uh, you know, material or knowledge, enough knowledge to counter some of the arguments brought about by those who are researching. And that is what you call mediocrity. So you can see Sigmund Freud ignored mediocrity in order to take us the far we, we, we have reached. Call it controversial, but it provoked our thinking and thinking for a better world. And these are the people you need in the 21st century. We have tried to call him the father of psychology. Yet in reality, we had psychology before him. But because of his immense or huge contribution, that makes him a very unique figure, a very important person we cannot forget in the world of academia because of the critical role he played.